please don't listen to this advice. Oh my gosh. Bounding into comics, Obi-Wan Kenobi director Deborah Chow, the failed series that was the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. It was so bad. It was Rise of Skywalker's levels of bad. You got Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor back. And that's what you gave us? Obi-Wan Kenobi director Deborah Chow says her advice for future Star Wars directors is to not get hung up on the Star Wars of it all. All right, so my advice to future Star Wars directors is to get hung up on the Star Wars of it all, all right? Exact opposite advice, because you shouldn't be listening to Deborah Chow's advice. If you guys have seen the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, you'll know what I mean. How do you how do you mess up something so royally when you brought back Hayden Christensen and you brought back Ewan McGregor? That's the biggest thing. I mean, I guess the sequel trilogy should have been the biggest thing. But you botched that. That was bad. So, this was the biggest thing Disney Star Wars had. Since the acquisition. And this is that's what they did? They First of all, they, put it, they made it into a series. They made it about some... Uh, about Leia and Obi-Wan. Obi I mean, I don't, need, I don't need to do a recap of the series, but come on, dude. This is what... This is the first time I'm seeing this article. Obi-Wan Kenobi showrunner Deborah Chow recently shared her advice. Forget you, Deborah Chow. Oh my gosh. This is, this is, all right. Speaking to the Hollywood Reporter's Brian Davis, Chow was asked, what advice would you offer the next director of a Star Wars project? Chow responded, make sure all the creatures go to the bathroom before you bring them to set. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting 45 minutes. Ah, that's a fun joke, right? Because they're in the costume. Ha ha ha. Okay. I'm annoyed, dude. That 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 had that title, dude. If bounding into comics is uh is clickbaiting me, I'm gonna be pissed. All right. After the joke, she shared her serious answer. The biggest thing I learned from the Mandalorian is to not get hung up on the Star Wars of it all. It's hard on a project where there is so much canon and so much responsibility to a fan base. So you're like, hey, there's so much canon and it's too much. I'm just going to forget about it. Because that's what you did with the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. It's so much, I can't deal with it. So I'm just going to pretend it's not even there. It's, so, it's hard on a project where there is so much canon and so much responsibility to a fan base. But I would always go, if you take the Star Wars out of this... And it's just people and human emotions. Does this story still hold up? No, it didn't. That's it. End of the story. Not only did Chow tell the future Star Wars creator to ignore the Star Wars of it all. Dude, this scene could have been so good. They didn't even give him the mullet. They didn't de-age. What? This is supposed to be Obi-Wan and Anakin... Around the episode, around the time of episode two, they should look like that, right? This is Disney we're talking about. They got the budget to have his hair not just slick back the hair, and they had the they, we saw the de aging they can do. Why wasn't that attention and effort and and passion put forth into this series? Why did they do the de aging? Why did they put the money into de aging? This you got Hugh and McGregor and Hayden Christensen back, and that's how you treat them. Uh, where was I? Not only did Deborah Chow tell, not only did Chow tell future Star Wars creators to ignore the Star Wars of it all and Star Wars canon, but she justified her canon-breaking decision to have Obi Wan Kenobi leave Tatooine and cross lightsabers with Darth Vader before they eventually met on the Death Star in the original Star Wars films. David asked Chow, "Did Alec Guinness, true from a certain point of view line?" about having told Luke that Darth Vader murdered his father give you license to imagine that there was more to most of what Obi-Wan said? She answered, I don't think anyone will ever know exactly what George Lucas intended or what the intention was with some... Li George... Okay, see, Star Wars Theory also brought this up. Why are they acting like George Lucas is dead? Like he's, Or he's like off in some remote island and that nobody has any contact with him. You can pick up the phone and ask him. You know what I mean? At least try. He might not give you an answer, but try. 
There's so much room for inter. There's so much room for interpretation, and so many people have different interpretations. I mean, I I don't know about that. So for us, the big thing was emotional authenticity, and that this felt innately like the right journey for these characters who were coming out of the prequels and into a new hope. All right, see, if Deborah Chow feels like this is innately the right journey for these characters, 100%, don't listen. You shouldn't be listening to this person. You shouldn't be listening. You shouldn't be going to this person for advice. And see, I I don't want to come at Deborah Chow. I I don't know if she's a if a writer or a director. I don't want to come at her for her on her based on her skills, right? She may be skilled, but she just doesn't respect Star Wars and she doesn't have that passion for Star Wars. Because if you have if you got somebody who is passionate and respected and knew the source material and knew the lore, uh, we wouldn't have gotten the Obi Wan Kenobi series the way, it, way way the way it came out to us. All right. Um. So I'm not coming at her for her skills. I'm coming at her for her love and passion for Star Wars. No person who loves Star Wars and is creating an Obi-Wan Kenobi series is going to say, forget about the Star Wars. However, Chow previously admitted to The Hollywood Reporter that she knew that Obi-Wan Kenobi was supposed to be sitting on Tatooine communing with Qui-Gon Jinn and watching over Luke Skywalker. Dude, and how they included Qui-Gon Jinn at the end? That could have been done so much better. Why include him like a little two-second clip at the end? He looked bad. And... <sighs> she told Davids, you're between two trilogies with these huge iconic characters. Everybody knows what happened to them before and after. And you're starting with a character where the public perception is that he should be sitting on that rock for 20 years. You can still make an interesting series. There are so many series where people are in isolation by themselves with doing practically nothing from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. And you made it interesting. You can do interesting things. This was, a, this was an opportunity to delve more into the Force. To delve into a, the relationship between Qui-Gon and Anakin. Uh, Qui-Gon, what am I saying? Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Watching Obi-Wan uh, watch over Luke, his emotional turmoil, the aftermath of what happened. I mean, we did see that a little bit, but we could have, they could have done it so much better, man. But those 20 years between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope had so much to explore on an emotional level. The reason it was public perception is because George made it very clear through his films. In the original Star Wars film, David... In the original Star Wars film... The reason it was public perception is because George made it very clear through his films. In the original Star Wars film, Darth Vader tells Obi-Wan Kenobi, I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Kenobi retorted, only a master of evil, Darth. My brother, <laughs> my brother uh, makes fun of this all the time. If George Lucas knew that Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin had this deep, an emotional relationship, a brotherly relationship to this point, why would Obi-Wan Kenobi, after all this while, first time seeing Darth Vader, be like, only a master of evil, Darth? Why would you call him Darth? Why would, you, why, would you, why would you respond like that? If you knew this guy intimately, why would you be talking like that? That sort of doesn't make any sense. Then in Revenge of the Sith, Kenobi not only volunteers to watch over Luke Skywalker, but he is tasked by Yoda to begin communing with Qui-Gon Jinn in order to master how to become one with the Force. Kenobi states, I will take the child and watch over him, Yoda responds. Until the time is right, disappear we will. Then Kenobi, then task, he then tasks Kenobi, in your solitude on Tatooine, training I have for you. Bro, how many, how many of you, after hearing that line, got so hyped, were so curious to see what the training was, that Yoda outlined for Obi-Wan and how that went down. That would have been so awesome. I've heard multiple interviews where Qui-Gon would have loved to come back to Star Wars. Now, after the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, he says he's done with it. <laughs> Interesting. But, um, 
prior to the Obi Wan Kenobi series, he had said he would love to come back. You could have integrated Obi Wan. You could have integrated Qui Gon a whole lot more into this. You could have seen maybe they could have shown a bit of how Qui Gon had got became how Qui Gon became one of the Force, and then that relationship between Obi Wan and Qui Gon, them trying to interact, that reunion there, that that could have been done so much better. An old friend has learned the path to immortality. One who has returned from the netherworld of the Force, your old master. How to commune with him, I will teach you. Dude, imagine starting off the series with a scene of uh, Yoda communing with Qui-Gon. That would have been cool. Clearly, Chow knew what she was doing. But she was also clearly taking her own advice. Yeah, her own advice of ignoring Star Wars. But she also admitted she did this when asked about having Kenobi track down a 10-year-old Leia Organa. She said, There was a lot of discussion about it, and we didn't know how the fan base would react. Just by that itself, we didn't know how the fan base react. They knew already that it wasn't going to be received properly. It wasn't going to be received well. Why do something that you know is not going to be received well, or you know is going to be questioned? Why take a risk? Why make a risky move? You knew beforehand. There was a lot of discussion about it, and we didn't know how the fan base would react. And if they'd say that we were breaking canon, so they knew beforehand and still did it. It's tricky because on some level, everything could be perceived as breaking canon. But you have to take some swings. Well, you took the wrong swing. There was also nothing that said they hadn't met before. So we did obviously take some license, but we tried to hook it back into A New Hope, at least to connect the two, Chow concluded. While Kenobi clearly met Leia when she was born, he did not meet her after that, given he was on Tatooine in solitude, watching over Luke Skywalker and learning to become one with the Force from Qui-Gon Jinn. This was made abundantly clear. Bro, okay, I was, I was worrying if they were going to actually say this. This was made... This was made this was made abundantly clear in the original Star Wars film when Kenobi received the mess receives a message from Princess Leia left inside R2D2 from him alongside the plans of the Death Star. Leia's message states, General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Clone Wars. Why would she say, General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in Clone Wars? Why wouldn't she say, Hey, remember we went on this whole adventure when I was a kid? You remember me? Yeah, okay, well, I need your help now. Clearly. Dude, these people don't think. They don't think. Now he begs you to help him uh, in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I'm unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and, I have, uh, and I'm afraid my mission to bring you to Aldron has failed. Blah, 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 blah. We know the quote. It seems pretty clear that Leia had not met Kenobi outside of her birth as she pleads for Kenobi's intervention. Dude, this article goes on. All right, I'm going to stop here. Directors of Star Wars in the future, do not take this advice from Deborah Chow because she has no clue what she's doing. All right, I don't want to be mean. When it comes to Star Wars, she doesn't have the right perspective, okay? I will say that for sure, 100%. Her outlook is not correct. If you're a future director of Star Wars and you care about it, I mean, why do, I mean, I was going to ask why do they why would they hire you if you don't care about Star Wars, but it seems to be that's what they do. So, if you're a director or writer or something with Star Wars, please put the Star Wars first. Don't cast it aside. All right, that's it for this video, man. What do you guys think about this article? What do you guys think about what Deborah Chow said? I'll put the link to the article down below in the comment section so you guys can check out the rest of the article. But that's it for me. I, I've said what I wanted to say. So uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.